Hey there. Today, I wanted to talk about self-compassion for our humanness um, and why this is important um, in when we're trying to create change, um, when we're just trying to live our lives in general. The first part that I want to talk about is what is compassion? Compassion is, when we look it up in the dictionary, it talks about concern for the suffering of others. So self-compassion is concern for the suffering of yourself having a concern for your own suffering. Like this is really impactful. I don't think people understand what this creates in our lives. Um, and the way that we do this almost, for me anyways, I like to use like looking at myself from an outside perspective, right? Because if we have compassion for others, I can look at those people and I can have concern for them, for their suffering. I can see that right? And so I want to turn that onto myself and look at what I'm going through and have concern for my own suffering. And suffering doesn't have to be huge, big. It can be small little things. Anything you're going through that you see as a challenge, as hard, as whatever, that is your suffering, right? Um, it could be a chronic illness. But it could also just be a cold. Um, so there's all different kinds of spectrums when it comes to suffering right? Um, one is not better than the other or like something that we shouldn't have compassion for because it's less than somebody else's suffering. Um, no, we want to have compassion for wherever you are at. Um, what I like to do is I like to think about this in a way that, like I said, from this outside perspective. And one of the things I really like to think and ask myself is, how would you comfort a loved one going through this, right? And then turning that back on myself. So if I saw somebody going through my same suffering circumstance, right? Whatever that is. Um, and it's not necessarily a circumstance, but it's whatever they're going through. If I'm dealing with the loss of a loved one, if I'm just dealing with my overeating, or if I'm dealing with my lack of drive and motivation or whatever, how do I turn that back and say, yes, if this was a friend, if this was a family member that I loved, what would I do for them? How could I comfort them? Okay. And so that's really what self-compassion is, is giving comfort to those people, but it's also giving comfort to yourself in this moment. And a lot of times people will take that in the wrong way and they'll say, isn't that just like self, isn't that just commiserating, like just um, making it worse? And it's not, it's validating the experiences that we're going through. And this is so huge. It's, it's loving kindness, it's understanding, it's curiosity, it's a listening ear, all of those things. It's not just like reveling and being like, oh, poor you, I feel so bad for you right? You're just never going to get it together. That's commiserating, right? Self-compassion is like, yeah, this is really hard. Like I could see why this would be a problem. Tell me more about what's going on for you. Um, it's like, let's work this through together, right? Which is kind of an interesting concept when you are talking about self-compassion, but it's, it's curiosity. It's understanding why we're feeling this, what we're going through. It's looking at this from all different angles. This compassion for ourselves will do so much more than, um, like I said, the self-validating compassion will do so much more than just looking at somebody and saying, or ourselves and saying, you're what's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Um, just get over it, um, all those kinds of things that we tend to tell ourselves, like those things actually don't create change and they just ignore the experience that we are having. And so we have to look at that experience and look at our humanness and, and connect with that. And it's so deep and visceral, but it makes us feel seen and heard. And this is so important to creating change to that validation, right? So yes, we can get compassion from others, but we can't always. And so that's why it's so important to always have it coming from us as well. So we can look at this experience that we're having and saying, yeah, this is, this is something that you're going through. Right. And, you know, the last little bit is 
the empowerment part. So once we feel this comfort, right, we we love on ourselves, we we listen to ourselves, we have curiosity for ourselves, we start to understand ourselves. We understand why we're thinking this way, why we're feeling this way, what's happening around us. Not in a place to just be like, yeah, that sucks. There's no way out. But the next bit is to empower ourselves. And I wrote down, now, who do I want to be? How do I want to show up in the world? Those are actions that we can take after the compassion, right? When we try to put those before the self-compassion, before the self-validation, we tend to make no progress. Like it just becomes like, what's wrong with you? Now change. And if anybody's noticed, that doesn't work. <laughs> um, it may work for a short period of time, right? Like if we're trying to get ourselves to exercise or any of those types of things, it may work, right? We may be able to beat ourselves up enough to go to the gym or to stop eating things or to, um, I don't know, quit a habit, start a habit, um, any of those things, right? But this, it just, it doesn't stick, right? And so once we can really look at this part of ourselves and say, what's really going on for me, then that is when we can say, okay, this is the situation. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm feeling. Now, how do I take the next steps forward, right? We can move forward through that versus the other where is very much shame. Um, something's wrong with you, right? Like, just get over it. Why can't you move on? All of those things, they don't work. They just don't. Um, we can see this very clearly in kids as we like look at children um, in school systems and those types of things where you have one teacher and you've probably all gone through this, had a teacher where you've had this experience where you felt loved and you wanted to grow and you felt understood and you felt that's a different experience than having a teacher come in and say why can't you get this what's wrong with you and I don't know if everybody's had that same experience I know I haven't so it feels very relatable but right the difference in how we then show up right so having self-compassion actually creates change but here's the other thing it may not so we can take this self-compassion from a different point of view of like, well, I'm going to have self-compassion for myself and there, then, then I can change, right? The thing that you'll find is like, um, I'll just take it back to food and eating, right? Like, so then we look at like the eating side of things and we're like, okay, so you want to eat, right? And then you're like, I'm going to have self-compassion for myself to change. It, it goes in direct conflict with these things. It's almost like we have to be in this place of not expecting the change, not because we don't need the change to happen, right? That's actually what creates the change. Now, does change always happen? No, it does not always happen from a place of compassion. Sometimes, and this is where I've actually found a lot of my growth is in having compassion and just letting things be, letting me be who I am and then experiencing this moment, this, this place in time. And there's a ton of growth in there. And the other side is like, okay, so why would I have compassion? Why do this? Why have the self-compassion? Be and like I said, because the other doesn't work. Beating myself up, shaming myself, telling me I got to do better. I got to change, you know, all those different things. It doesn't work. So the alternative is to have compassion, which may create change, which may not create change, but either way, it feels better. We feel the love. We feel the humanness. So create change, don't create change. Either way, you win. Either way. But beating yourself up doesn't create long-lasting change, and it feels awful. So like. If it worked, that would be great. But all the studies, all of the things that we've learned about psychology and those things is it doesn't, right? And so this understanding of yourself, this getting to know what's going on, having compassion, how to comfort yourself in these moments, how to have understanding and curiosity and listen to yourself. It's so huge. It's so important it will make your whole life better, 
whether you change or don't change, but you will see the change in unexpected ways, okay? It won't be necessarily this correlation of one-to-one, -one, right? Like, I'm gonna have compassion on myself, therefore I'm going to stop eating less. No, it's going to look, it, it will take a more organic form. Anyways, hopefully this helps. Um, ask that question to yourself. How would you comfort a loved one going through the same thing? Looking at your, your issues, your problems, if it's around eating or your body or, um, or around finances or, you know, relationships, how would I, and not to come in and say, oh, I'm going to give them advice and tell them how to do it. But how would you comfort them? Not say, oh, you know, just do this thing and it'll get better. No, you come in and you say, I love you. I know this is a hard thing. I know we're, I, I want to hear your story. I want to know what's going on for you and really get to know yourself. That is self-compassion. Um, hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, ask away. I'll do my best to answer. Hopefully this made sense. It's kind of a very nebulous concept to some, but it's, it's been so huge to me in my journey. I used to think I had to get places I needed to change. And what I've learned is as I come into my own, that that is where the true change and the real beauty of life comes. Um, so like I said, help. hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If this is something you would like to explore further, reach out to me. Um, you can either message me or um go to my website and schedule a free consultation one-on-one -on -one session with me and we can start from there uh, i hope you have a lovely day and uh, i love you and i'll talk to you guys later bye